All right, so we want to prove that every metric space is normal. Um, normal apparently is like one of the more overused words in mathematics. Um, but here what we mean is that if you have any two disjoint open sets, then you can find closed supersets of those open sets, which are also disjoint. Um, and so if you picture like, like a typical, like how you would expect open sets to look, if you got like an A here and a B here, and you assume these are, oh wait, closed. Yeah, if you assume these are closed and disjoint, then you should imagine you should be able to find open sets which you can uh, fit around them, which would also be disjoint. And maybe these open sets need to be like really, really, really close to the closed sets, but you should be able to do it. Um, this is if you're like thinking about like standard topologies in like R2, so, which is how I sort of like to visualize my topologies. Um, but yeah, this is not true in general of all topologies, obviously, um, but it is true of metric spaces. Um, which is nice, because metric spaces are nice, because you have distances, and so you have norms, and you have the triangle inequality, which is, like, super important in analysis. And I like analysis, so I like metric spaces. So anyways, um, thankfully they give you a hint, which basically tells you which, which open sets you're supposed to use. Um, so you basically, what this comes down to is we're not going to prove anything about um, the points x where the distance from x to a is equal to the distance from x to b. You don't really need to use that. But the way that we think about this is you sort of find some set which cuts a and b in half. Um, and this set will be the set of all points x such that the distance from x to a is equal to the distance from x to b. And then you let u be the set of points that on one side of this line and v is the set of all points on the other side. And of course this line, like if a and b are really weird closed sets, then this um, set, the dividing set where the distance between a and b is the same, that dividing set can be very weird, of course, but um, if you choose u and v in this way, they'll always be open. And yeah, so we'll, this will be, this, this is the diagram of what we're looking for. Um, you know, at first when I read this, it says, consider the set of points x where the distance between x and a is less than the distance between x and b, or the distance between x and a is greater than x and b. So I put the or as like, like I thought they were saying to just consider just one set of points, which in this diagram would be u union with v. But then I realized, oh wait, that can't be what they're trying to refer to. Um... So yeah, the or means um, it should be or the set of points x where blah, blah, blah. Not, not the set of points x where, and then in parentheses, this condition or this condition. That's how it should work. Um, yeah, a lot of times in math, there can be some ambiguity with how English works, but you just go with whatever is the one that has to be the way to do it. And here, the way that has to be is uh, the way that I said. So anyways, um, enough babbling. So, um, let X be a metric space with metric or distance function rho. I don't know why rho is used for distance functions is, um, usually you use D for distance, which I like, but rho is fine. It's also Greek letters, and Greek letters are nice and curvy, and they look nice, and yeah, they're cool. So, just as a reminder of what it means to be a metric space, tau has a base. The base for a base for the topology tau is given by fancy B, which is the set of all sets B, R, X, and this is a set of all points Y in X such that the distance between X and Y is strictly less than R. That's what I mean by B, R, X. So it's this, where R is greater than zero and X is an element of the set X. 
Okay, so we must prove that it's normal, which means that A and B are closed, blah, 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 blah. I explained it already. Um, oh, and it needs to be T1. So it needs to be T1, and it needs to satisfy that condition. Um, to prove that tau is T1, um, let's see here. So let x and y be elements of x, such that x is not equal to y. Let r be the distance between x and y, which is greater than zero. Then br over 2y is an open set containing y, because it's centered at y, but not x, because the radius is r over 2, so it can't reach x. Alright, so Thus, tau is T1. Next, let A and B be disjoint closed subsets of our overall set X. Okay. Um, we will first prove a fact. So suppose C is closed and the distance from X to C is zero. What, what, what I'm going to prove is that X must be an element of C. Okay. So how could it be the case that the distance between X and C is zero? then um, x is in C, or for all r greater than 0, there exists a y in C such that the distance between x and y is less than r. So both of these statements could be true. This is a truly mathematical inclusive or here, um, but at least one of these statements must be true. So x is in C, or... Um, for all r, there is a y such that the distance is less than r. Um, because that's how this, this, this distance between x and c is the infimum over all distances between x and y, where y ranges over all elements of c. Um, and so if that's, a, if that's zero, then you can find points which are arbitrarily close to, points in c which are arbitrarily close to x. Okay? Um, so, if, the latter is true, then for any neighborhood u of x, there exists some r greater than zero, such that x is contained in the ball of radius r of x, which is contained in u. Um, and this is since b is a base for the topology. And then we know that there exists a y in C such that the distance between x and y is less than r. So y is in C intersect brx set minus x, which is contained, of course, in C intersect u set minus x. see here. And thus, the latter set is not empty. This means that x is a limit point of c. Of course, Fallen introduces the definition as accumulation point. Then he says that it's sometimes called limit point. 
um, sometimes called cluster point, but in this textbook, a cluster point is a different thing. Uh, but limit point is the most common thing, I think, and I also like it because limit is two syllables and accumulation is five, and I don't have time for those three extra syllables or that writing. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so if you remember what it means to be a limit point, that means that for every neighborhood, to for, um, for x to be a limit point of c, it means that for every neighborhood u containing x, every open neighborhood u containing x, well, I guess you could say just a neighborhood u containing x, then c intersected with u set minus x is not empty. That's the definition that's given in the textbook for a limit point. Um, there's equivalent definitions, but that one works. And so this definition is satisfied and therefore x is a limit point of c. Since c is closed, it contains its limit points and thus x is in c. So therefore, Back at the beginning, we proved, we said that, okay, so if the distance between x and c is zero, then either x is in c or the other thing. But the other thing also implies that x is in c. So x is guaranteed to be in c if the distance between x and c is zero and c is closed. Okay, so that's really important in this exercise. Um, that's an important fact, and we need to go out of our way to prove it um, because it's important. Okay, so let's, so do, do we already say that we're going to let A and B be disjoint open closed subsets of X? We did, okay. So we have A and B already, so let U be the set of all points X, obviously in the set X, such that the distance between X and A is less than the distance between X and B. And we're going to let V be the set of all X's such that the distance between X and A is greater than the distance between X and B. All right, so clearly the intersection of U and V is empty because you can't have a point which satisfies both of these conditions because that would be a contradiction. Um, so I claim A is contained in U. Well, here, I don't even need to write that because it's easy enough to prove. If X is in A, then the distance between X and A is zero. And since A intersected with B is empty, X is not in B, so the distance between X and B is strictly greater than zero. Because the if if the distance between A and if the distance between X and B is zero, we've proven that this implies X is in B. Contrapositively, if X is not in B, then the distance between X and B is not zero. And since distance functions are positive, that means that the distance between X and B is strictly greater than zero. So thus x is in u, which confirms that a is contained in u. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to prove that u is open. And what we're going to prove is that every element of u is contained in an open neighborhood, which is entirely contained in u. So next, let's R, B, well we have this distance between X and B which we know to be strictly positive, so let R be one half of it. And choose any Y contained in this ball of radius R around X, where R is the R that we just chose. Then, what's the distance between X and Y? Um, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to one half times the distance between x and b, 
which is strictly less than the distance between x and b. And thus, y is in u. Again, October 31st, it's Halloween, not going out because I went out last night and went to a concert and it was awesome. So anyways, um, distance between x and y, it was sloth rust by the way, you should go listen to them, they're really good. So the distance between x and y is strictly less than the distance between x and b. And so therefore it has to be the case that y is in u because I think I'm missing something. So the distance between, I want the distance between y, I want the distance between y and a to be, so if y is in b, no, what I want to prove, I want to prove that the distance between y and a is less than the distance between y and b. That's what I want to prove. I think I messed something up here. Because here's the idea. The idea is um, you have this point x here and we've got this ball of radius um, and this distance here, this is going to be um, Oh, okay, so I blanked out a little bit. So, I want to prove that u is open. So let x be an element of a. So x is an element of a, which means that the distance between x and a is zero. And the distance between x and b, let's just say, um, let's see, we're using r, let's use s. s is the distance between x and b. Then s is strictly positive so there's some open ball around x such that none of the points in this ball can be elements of b because if they were elements of b then the distance between x and b would be smaller than s so let's take this ball of radius one half s so this will be r then r is not going to be contained in b and so, since R is, well, we, we don't just want that R is not in B. We want that all the points R are closer to X, are closer to A than they are to B. Okay, so I, I think we're actually close because the distance between X and A, right, okay, yeah, because the distance between, no, Y, the distance between y, if you choose any y in here, the distance between y and a is going to be, it could be smaller than the distance between y and x, but it won't be any bigger because x is in a. So the distance between y and a is less than or equal to the distance between x and y, which is less than or equal to one half the distance between x and b. And Let's see here. So one half the distance between x and b. This has to be strictly less than the distance between y and b. And that's because the distance between... And why, why is this? Why is this? This is because the distance between... So we can sort of draw a line going from x to the outside of this ball of radius s. And if you draw that line, y is somewhere in between there, but it's closer to x than it is to the outside of the line. Um, all right, I think I've come up with an argument and it's not really pretty, but it works. Okay, so 
It's also going to use contradiction. So basically, let's make this thing even smaller. Um, so let r be one third the distance between x and b. Choose any y in b r x. Then, let's see here. So what we're going to do is we want to prove that y is in u. So assume for contradiction y is not in u. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, the distance between y and a it's going to be less than or equal to the distance between x and y, which by which is strictly less than r, which is one third distance between x and b. So this would mean if y is not in u, this would mean that the distance between y and b is less than one third row of x, b as well. Because for y to not be in u, um, then y needs to be at least as close to b as it is to a. So right, this would mean that so the distance between y and a is strictly less than r. So then the distance between y and b would have to be less than or equal to the distance between y and a, which is strictly less than r. Okay, so then what we have, um, I think we can attain the minimum point. And if we could attain the minimum point, this argument would be easy. Um, minimum point on this boundary here. Um, and we could attain it by the closedness of the sets A and B, but I don't want to like use a use that kind of argument, and I can get around it in this way. So there, for all epsilon greater than zero, um, there exists some element B in the set B such that let's erase this now. The distance between Y and B is strictly less than um, one third rho x b plus epsilon. Um, so choose b such that, or choose b corresponding to epsilon where epsilon is going to be less than one third rho x b. Then we have the distance between x and b is going to be less than or equal to the distance between x and b, which by the triangle inequality is less than the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and b, which is going to be, let's see, the distance between x and y is strictly less than one-third rho x b. And the distance between y and b is strictly less than one-third rho x plus b plus epsilon, so plus one-third rho x b. And we add these together, and we get rho x b. So the distance between x and b is strictly less than itself because of that. And that's a contradiction. Which is impossible. Hence, or thus, doesn't matter. Um, y is in u. Okay, so that's our uh, convoluted and unnecessary contradiction argument. Well, I guess it's not convoluted because we're not convoluting anything. PC and battery saver mode. Now you're charging. All right, cool. Okay, so now that I've sort of saved the proof or at least made it go from 
uh, broken to not great, let's continue. Um, so y is in u. Thus, this holds for every single y in brx. If we remember that from way back. Um, so x is in brx, which is contained in u. This holds for all x in u. And thus, u, whoa. That wasn't great. I better finish up this proof soon. Thus u is open. So u is an open superset of A. It's an open set which contains A. Um, likewise, V, oh, come on, I'm so close. V is an open superset of B by pretty much the exact same argument, but you flip U with V and you flip A with B and I guess you might have to flip more things because I use this weird epsilon argument, um, but it works. Um, so because my computer is apparently breaking, so I'll just say thus, tau is normal. And hence, any metric space is normal. Because, right, what did I do here? I proved that if you have two disjoint closed sets, A and B, then you can find court, you can find respective supersets, U and V, such that A is in B and U is in V and U no, A is in U and B is in V, and U and V are disjoint, and U and V are open. And that's the second thing that you need to prove in order to prove normality of a topology. And that combine, so yeah, that thing combined with T1-ness gives you normality, and so thus tau is a normal topology, and this holds for any metric space. Well, this holds for the topology on any metric space, and so we've proven that any metric space is normal. And this completes our proof.